Nimpal Channel Marine Conservation Area is located on the main island of Yap. It's at the west side. It's about 77.5 uh, hectares in size. It contains the Nimpal uh, Natural Channel and the uh, reef flat area includes the outer reef and a blue hole. The Nimpal uh, Marine Conservation Area is uh, is one third of the, the total fishing ground for the two communities of Kadai and Okao. We could tell that this area is not one of the best uh, around the main island in terms of biodiversity. But for us in Kadai and Okao, we have a limited uh, fishing ground. So uh, this is the only uh, area that uh, we think it's best to have the marine conservation area. Long time ago, uh, I was young and used to go fishing with other uh, young men. I uh, listened to old people talk about uh, fishing in the village, in the community. Fishing is a uh, part of uh, Yapi's life, our uh, daily life. I saw a lot of changes uh, compared to before when I was young uh, going fishing. Long time ago, uh, I did not see many dead coral. But the last time I went fishing, I saw a lot of dead coral and a lot of places in the water that there is very few fish. It wasn't like before. The key uh, thing for the community was their fisheries. You know, that's what they were, you know, they saw a decline in their, in their fishery and that's what they were interested in bringing back that, that fishery. In Yap, uh, our culture, this village touch your water. Nobody should be fishing in that water. But now it's a little bit different. People are poaching during my time. The community uh, uh, men and, and the community chief um, decide the, the solutions for, for the community. Yeah, but that time, 2005, uh, fish uh, were very scarce. So uh, the two villages, like uh, here, Okao and Krai, came. Uh, up with the idea to do something about it. So we get together the whole community. Then we all agree to do something like this. That's when we come up with this idea to do a conservation area. At first it was only Kadai, you know, decide to do the MPA, but then uh, soon after the leaders of uh, Okao village uh, decide to join with us to uh, come up with uh, an MPA uh, plan. Because to include, for example, the channel, the marine channel, the Nimple Marine Channel, that's that area of the reef, uh, the two villages have shared fishing rights in that. So it couldn't just be one village making that commitment. You know, both villages needed to be part of it. So. So that's how, you know, the, the villages work, utilizing their traditional alliances. These are villages that have, they're within the same municipality. They have history of working together on projects. They came together and then the, the zone was expanded to what it is now. If they chose uh, to do a no-take area, they can't do a no-take area on someone else's fishing ground. You know, it has to be there on fishing runs. So there, they, there is some sacrifice that the community has to, uh, has to give. When the community decided to form a conservation area, there were people that uh, were not in favor. Some people in the community thought it was a, a, a foreign idea and may not work. You know, people, they need money. And usually, they catch fish to sell. Okay, more people are dependent on a caste-based economy nowadays due to lifestyle changes. 
Uh, so a conservation area was seen as limiting their access to where they can earn an income from. However, conservation practices are built into our traditional ways from many eons ago. But when we use the word conservation instead of the local term, people think it's a foreign solution to a problem. Because uh, of our culture, the chief is the only person who can say yes and the only person who can say no. And therefore, everyone follow the chief's order and form a core group to achieve the goal of the marine conservation area. They are uh, doing the most work on the project. Then uh, inform uh, the two villages on uh, what they need or uh, what needed to, to be done in order to improve the protected area. And it's not for us today, but probably for our young generation in the future. There is uh, something to it that, you know, if it fails, it's not just, you know, the, the individual community members that fail, but then it reflects badly on, you know, the whole community, not just one village, but two villages. So, you know, in, in Yapis, that's very big. So at the beginning, you know, they had to uh, really think hard about it. And But once they made that decision, I, they really have to stick behind it because other, not, not to be 100% committed to it will just be the laughing stock. You, no one wants to be the laughing stock. Or you talk the talk and you better walk the talk. <laughs> you can't just talk it and not walk it. You have to walk it. For us islanders, we're an oral culture. So, you know, we tell stories, everything is, you know, is in our chants and uh, we're not really writing people. But now that we have outside resources and outside people that are interested in supporting the work that we do, it's critical to have it written because uh, outside our Pacific Island cultures, it's written. We need things to be written out so that you, we have it in black and white and it's clear. There's um, currently a lot of you know NGOs and partners that are out, uh, out in the region you know supporting this type of work and especially uh, utilizing these highly participatory tools to help communities organize their thoughts and then rank those actions. The men for, from the two community decided that the youth should be more involved in the enforcement program for the marine conservation area. In about 2009, that's when the enforcement uh, uh, started. We built a surveillance platform and uh, anchored it next to the MPA. We have guys uh, staying there overnight. They stay there, they look, you know, look for any activity that happening within and around the MPA. Outside of the no-take zone, we confiscate unattended net and we ban commercial fishing. And we only allow subsistence fishing. We put out the solar lamp at the boundary of the no-take zone. And we also put out some sticks at the 50 feet buffer zone to also clarify the, the buffer zone and also for the enforcement to see the no-take zone area. When we encounter the violator in the MPA, we dealt with them in the traditional way. We confiscate their gear and we brought the violator to the community for the chief and the community to decide their punishment. Compared to when the, the two villages formed the MPA, we've noticed a great change in the community's behavior. Enforcement is an important part of that. We encounter less poachers in the MPA. People are aware of the rules and, and people begin to, to uh, respect and see the benefit of the MPA. The community uh, see the, that uh, the MPA is working. We've seen that the uh, corals are, you know, healthier and fish are coming back. So, uh, yes, we can say that uh, 
the MPA is working. Uh, more fishermen uh, uh, want to fish as close as possible to the to the MPA. So people comply. My name is Lucas Isal and I'm a researcher here at the Palau International Coral Reef Center. Um, and we did some work in Nepal, uh, looking at the protected area and comparing it to a neighboring reference site. Um, and Nepal is amazing because it has the second highest fish densities or the number of fish um, in any protected area in the region and it's only second to Helen Reef. And Helen Reef is a very remote atoll. Um, so this is a very good example of a protected area um, that is close to people. It's being managed by two neighboring villages. Um, and yet uh, this village has managed to um, manage this protected area. Um, and we are seeing fish numbers and fish abundance that is comparable to um, protected areas that are remote, that have no fishing pressure, that have no um, pressure coming from you know, local communities living close to these protected areas. What I have learned today when I go fishing, night time, is the big eye, snapper, we catch big one. But before, you don't catch, not even small one. After uh, visiting some communities uh, that uh, member of the Yap Alman were really interested and, uh, and they uh, want to, wanted to do the, the same thing in their uh, community. So it proves that uh, you know, the MPA is working. Yap Alman is a, uh, uh, a stand for uh, Yap uh, Locally uh, Managed Area Network. It is a uh, group that uh, uh, recently formed to uh, um, come together and uh, share the, the, the experience from each other. Yap Alman has, uh, member, has uh, members from almost every uh, uh, community. My name is Jonathan Fadal. I'm from uh, here in Yap State, but I represent the community of Gutspur Village. I got involved with Alman primarily through my community that looked at marine conservation as a, as a viable option for them. We have been having depletion of reef fish that my village depend on for food and sustenance. Uh, Nimple conservation area right here that we're at right now was the one that inspired us to get into the uh, marine protected area movement uh, and we've seen their success we've seen the amount of fish that uh, that it, that their area has yielded and we wanted to be we wanted to be a part of that I would drive here and just stand on the ledge right there and look down and realize that the fish that are swimming close to humans are is not what's happening on the other side of the island, which is my side of the island. And that's what really happened for, uh, for our community. Everyone knew about Nimple, but it was the fishermen that said, Nimple is important because of these reasons. And the island in the Pacific, a fisherman has great status in the community and everyone listens to them in terms of expertise and knowledge that they pass from fisherman to fisherman that ties directly into self-sustenance from the, from the water. So when the fishermen started saying an MPA is important, this is why, everyone listened. And then that's what started the, the whole process in getting our marine protected area going. There is an advantage to having an, an MPA. It's not, an MPA is not gonna cut your, your, your livelihood in terms of fishing, in terms of providing for your family. It doesn't do that. It only ensures that your family in the future are going to have something that's truly their own. Although the community's um, strategy of keeping the fish uh, population was a success, a land-based activity such as development can ruin this success. Healthy coral reef system and fish habitat is important for recovery and being resilient to potential climate change impacts. What my community is concerned about is the soil erosion. Here we have the marine conservation area and the mangrove 
it's the nursery for the small, smaller fish. And you know, if there's a lot of uh, sedimentation in the mangrove, it will not be uh, as a nursery for the smaller fish. To sustain the community's uh, MPA effort, they have expanded their work into uh, terrestrial areas um, by using the reef to reef approach. This work benefits the whole community and it also made it easy for outside technical assistance to support their terrestrial works. The Nipa Nursery is a coastal strengthening project which the community wanted to plant Nipa and transplant them along the shoreline. They also want to utilize the nursery for fruit plants for their agroforestry. We have a plant area that we are protecting now. It's about uh, 92 hectares. It is important so we can have much better control on development. So we can have a, a better management on how to do it in a, in a way that will uh, minimize the erosion to the ocean. So we come up with this plan to grow uh, the nipa in the nursery until uh, to a certain height, then we plant them back in here. Yeah, if you come back uh, here in five years, in this area, you will see nipa growing. It, it will help the community in, me, in many ways, like typhoon, it will help breaking out, uh, breaking down the winds that blowing in, and also help um, uh, soil erosion during uh, rainy season into the mangrove and the water. We all know that if our resources are as healthy as they are, it's uh, better for them, you know, to, they probably could bounce back easier if they have like uh, future impacts from climate change, like uh, increased uh, uh, sea level temperature and uh, causing uh, bleaching and stuff. So as much as we want our reefs to be healthy, uh, puts the community in a better better position to deal with climate change. I believe the Nimple case study is a great example of um, ecosystem management that is led by community. Uh, it yields greater benefit to the whole community as well as statewide. Yeah, my, my message to other community is to, to be organized and uh, you know organize themselves to you know that they can uh, uh, better prepare and uh, uh, be involved. If you're committed to it, if it's something that you strongly, passionately believe about, uh, believe in, then I think you should just go for it and you know work work with what you have. Uh, this project, if you're gonna look at Yap State as a whole. This project was in uh, physical site-wise, you know, it's not the most uh, biodiverse or, you know, the most uh, pretty underwater, you know, for, for Yap State. But the, the community, you know, was committed to it and they, and they uh, believed in it and continued to pursue it, you know, in good times, bad times, but they continued and persevered. You know, um, when we first start our con conservation area, I have received many complaints from uh, uh, people. The reason, one reason is, is that because they are afraid uh, we're stopping them from um, from their uh, income and because our chief has the right to stop everything until about two years after every everyone in these two communities began to see the outcome and the risk that we took for those two years to to protect one area and not nobody will get in so so that's something for a new community that has to 
to think about because it's better to take a two year risk just not to fish but you can fish after that two years instead of uh, keep on fishing and then later on maybe along maybe about 10 years after or 20 years after you go fish you don't catch any So, you take risk to maintain the amount of fish in there instead of not taking any risk to, um, to uh, abandon your reef or, uh, or what? Deplete fish on your reef. Your community took the risk? For, yeah, we took the risk. What was the result? The result is uh, everyone's happy.